Hi everyone, uh, welcome to Swiss Steering Team Live Talk. Um, and it's on. The opening ceremony launched yesterday officially the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games. It was a bit empty, but still very festive. We saw Switzerland um, going through uh, the stadium. And first medal for Switzerland. This is the information uh, of this morning. It's for shooting. Uh, Nina and Kristen uh, got bronze this morning. That's really positive for our delegation uh, that start racing tomorrow. Matteo Sanslans um, and Mo Jaye are the two first ones to start racing tomorrow morning, 5 a.m. It's going to be an early start for the Swiss followers. And today we have three special guests, uh, Nathalie Brugger, um, the coach from Modes, Tony Otero, and we start now with Marco Brunner. He's in charge of all the logistics for the team. So a lot to do. Marco, how are you? Hello, Sophia. Well, all good. It, uh, it feels like uh, we arrived uh, so long time ago. So I'm really excited that it finally starts with racing. And what did you do since you arrived? A lot of work uh, with the containers, most of all. Yes, well, we arrived on the 9th. So actually already more than two weeks ago. Uh, we had plenty of uh, work to do with uh, container unloading, preparing the ribs, installing the containers. Um, yeah, it was really plenty of work. We had uh, some difficulties as well. You might see later on, on on some pictures as the containers were placed uh, on 70 centimeters of height. Uh, so it was difficult to unload the containers as the the Enoshima Yacht Harbor is in a tsunami evacuation uh, uh, hazard zone. So yeah, it was it 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 was intense and hot, and but finally we were we were nearly ready when the athletes came. Uh, so everybody had his freedom to train a lot in the last few days. We had uh, amazing um, weather so far, hot uh, but light winds. So yes, every day there was somebody on the water. I think we're going to show a few pictures now, a uh, video of all the pictures, because we cannot film, unfortunately, in the harbor, just to show the, the big job you've done uh, for the team. So big, big work in these two containers. Uh, Marco, how, wh what's going on in these containers? Well, we actually had the chance to place two containers this time here in, um, in Enoshima. The one we used basically as a, a chill out and preparation and changing. So in the back, there is a little uh, office um, on, on the first floor and then we have a second floor inside where the athletes can uh, chill a little bit before the, the the start or if they need to rest a bit then that's the perfect place to do it uh, this container is uh, cooled down to like 24 degrees outside it's about 30 32 but it feels sometimes like 40 degrees it's really really hot and uh, towards the front of the container, we have some more spaces for all our material. And uh, as well, the, the fridge is there. We have an ice slurry machine, basically everything we need to cool down our bodies. And then in the and maybe second, a... sorry, yeah. yeah. In the second container we have in the back, we have our ice bath. So the athletes can um, cool down their legs and the upper body as well. Uh, with 12 degrees uh, water, so the body can cool down. Uh, and in the front, we have installed uh, a little gym. Uh, as well, in the hotel, we have a little gym that we, we needed to install. Um, this might now change a bit when we are in racing mode, when we don't need the, the, the gym anymore, but for cool down with the ergometer and things and stuff, we're still going to keep some, some space. And maybe just a few words about the atmosphere in this container. Is it very work? Is it uh, fun? Are people playing? Uh, how is the atmosphere uh, when they're there? 
I've been uh, with the team in 2012 and 2016, and I must say it's it's really nice uh, this time as well. We we did well. I put some uh, efforts in the container, and uh, people think now it's more of a, a chalet. So it's not uh, just uh, uh, a, a, a metal can anymore where we are inside and we we just must wait there. I think everybody feels at the moment quite comfortable and is uh, in this happy with with our container and likes to sit in the shadow in front of the container, with uh, which looks like a little bit uh, in the Alps uh, in Switzerland with the little chairs and the table and the tissues with the cow and this Heidi stuff. So nah, I must say it's uh, it's nice. And the, the other countries as well are, are looking what we're doing. So it's uh, it feels good from the atmosphere. Of course, it has nothing to do with the performance in the end, but I think uh, everybody feels uh, a little bit at home at the moment and that, uh, that makes it uh, nice. Of course, it has to do with the performance too, Marco. So I think on behalf of the team, uh, I can truly and deeply thank you because everyone is saying you have done an amazing job. So thanks a lot. And I'm sure uh, Tony that is joining us now can confirm. Tony, how do you feel there in uh, Marco's super containers? It's amazing. The, the pity is that you haven't seen the pictures at the beginning when we opened the containers. So you could see the work he's done from container full of ribs to what you've seen in the pictures. It's, and every day he's got new surprises, which is really nice. You go to the container every day and you see, okay, what's new today? It's quite it's nice. Christmas every day at the container with Marco. You can uh, have a look on Facebook and Instagram, Swiss Sailing Team. There are many pictures from the first days. Uh, then you can see how the container, both containers were. Uh, Tony, talking about your work, uh, what do you do with the team as a, the rules advisor? Um, basically, the Olympic Games are the most complicated in logistics, in the sports side of it, but also in the rules, documents, and and and, and compli complicated things that the juries and the organizers are putting on top especially this one, we have all the COVID. So there's another rule, a regulament um, related to the COVID. So we, we, are, we have plenty of documents and they produce new documents every day. And I have to help the sailors and the coaches to go through them and, and get to follow all the rules that they are writing every day. And another work is going to start tomorrow with the first racing days and might have some protests. Um, how do you feel the team uh, before the, the first day? I think they're ready. They are really motivated. They are looking forward to the races, which is the best thing we can see in them. And I hope they won't need any help with the races and the, and the protests. I hope we won't see the jury in the whole week because it's not, not very safe to go. Even if you are in the right, you have some risk going in. But the work is for, for me and for these documents and rules started 10 days ago, three months ago. They've been producing documents for, for months and new versions every week. And, and it's an ongoing thing. Tomorrow starts the racing, but working with them with this, it's been a long thing already. So that is what we wish you, no prot protests uh, for the next days. And maybe one last question, because we've been hearing a lot about it here in Switzerland, this typhoon, is it coming to you? What they said this morning, the, the weather forecast people from, from the organizing committee this morning said there's 70% chance that the path will touch us. There's 30% that we will not be in typhoon conditions, but we are getting ready for strong winds and a lot of rain. We'll see. In, on Tuesday, it's between Monday and Tuesday that we may have the finally, if it is coming or not. Well, anyway, the team is going to be ready to face anything and uh, to prepare themselves. They train a lot uh, in Switzerland, but also uh, there in Japan. They have a little gym 
prepared by Marco uh, in the hotel and uh, invited to watch a few images of mood training. And Nathalie Bruguer is with us today. She's a MODS coach, but she is also, of course, a three times Olympic uh, sailor for Swiss sailing team. How does it feel to be for the first time at the Olympics as a coach, Nat? Well, I think it's, um, it's a new adventure for me. Um, of course, I see the picture of me as an athlete in the container for the three last Olympics. But uh, this one is special, it's special for like my new job as a coach and as well for the COVID and that this Olympic circuit was like four or five years instead of four. So yeah, it's, it's everything is completely new for me. And what can you tell us about Maud on the day uh, before the first day? She starts tomorrow at five uh, in the Ilka six uh, category, which was called laser radial before. Uh, how does she feel today? Yeah, I think she, she's all right. She's, uh, she's ready. And, um, to feel a little bit better, the Olympic atmosphere. We've been watching a lot of uh, a lot of different sports today. That was happening today, and like the, the, all the races from other Swiss people as well. So at least we feel like we are at the Olympics. And uh, yeah, she's ready to rock and roll. And um, how did you see she improving maybe in the last years? Because you've been working uh, with her since a long time. Uh, how did you see her uh, improve or change? I think she, she got an approach that is much more professional, like she knows her body very well and physically she got a, really she improved a lot in the last year and technically we had to work on a few points and I think she, yes, she, she, she feels ready. She's been doing all the hours on the water, like all the hours at the gym. I think she, she did everything she could. So now time to enjoy and, and yeah, make the most of, of these games. And maybe one uh, bit of difficult question, but we know that mentally, when she's under pressure, sometimes there are a bit ups and downs. Uh, do you think she's strong now and, and ready for, for her first Olympic Games? Well, I think like all the athletes, they react different to, to pressure. And, and um, yeah, we've been working a lot on this point to make sure that she's ready for the, her first Games. And yeah, I think she, yeah, she improved as well on that side. And, Surely she, she can control herself a little better and yeah, she will show us what she has. And two races scheduled for uh, tomorrow. Can you tell a bit the, the wind forecast, the weather forecast? So kind of a classic situation. We've been racing and training the last 10 days with another wind. Completely different than what we're going to have tomorrow. So it's kind of always like this in sailing regatta. So it's, it's kind of funny. We're going to start with a northeast to east wind um on a new race course it's gonna be quite shifty coming from the shore so yeah well we'll see it's gonna be a bit of a lake um lake style sailing tomorrow that's what i was about to say our sailors are used to to this shifty and difficult conditions so i hope mateo and mood uh will do the best of it uh tomorrow for the first day marco nat tony thank you for joining uh me joining us today wish you a nice evening and uh, for you uh, at home, I invite you to follow the games tomorrow at 5 a.m. starts. So the tracking is available on Swiss Sailing website. If you go on their homepage, you will find the link or on, on our Facebook page also it's shared. We don't know yet what uh, the TV broadcast uh, will show tomorrow. So RTS and SRF, we will publish this later on. Hopefully they will broadcast something on their website, RTS and SRF. Um, tomorrow we will be joined by Aziel, uh, Marco, Aziel Fer Fernandez, who is Mateo's coach, uh, Marco Versari for the tracking, and special guest from Switzerland, Nils Tenank, that of course you all know, the Finn sailor that just didn't make it to the games. So that will be uh, tomorrow at one. Um, but until then, fingers crossed for Maud and Mateo tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye bye.